what's up everybody uh first man i want to say a huge thank you to all of you i'm about to hit 5,000 subscribers and it's been about a year that's not too bad i don't think i'm about 80 away so you know if you're on the fence hit that subscribe button today it helps me out a lot um but to celebrate 5k i'm going to do a giveaway on my new patreon if you're not a member there go over link is in the description uh, it's free to join i'm going to give away a spore pack with a few different genetics in it uh, to celebrate so go over there join up and let's literally grow together so today's video is going to be about agar right my three recipes that i use in my day-to-day -day work in mycology um, i've been doing this for a while and as you can see all these ingredients in front of me you can make agar out of you can make this as complicated or as simple as you want i've tried it all and i still come back to these three uh, they're very simple they're very cost effective uh, and they just work and at the end of the day that's what my whole channel is about i want this channel to be about just foundational knowledge simple techniques proven methods that will give you a solid starting point as a beginner in this hobby because um, without that it's really hard to really get into experimenting um, without the you know the frustration of failure so build your foundational knowledge Get comfortable with the simple text, get some good flushes under your belt, and then go experiment. It's fun, you know? We all love to experiment. That's why I get into this stuff. I, I nerd out on this shit, or I wouldn't have all of this, right? Um, but get the basic stuff down first and keep it simple. People way overcomplicate growing mushrooms, especially cubes. Just keep it simple. They will grow. They, they've been around way longer than any of us. So just keep it simple, and you can't go wrong. I want to talk a little bit about why we use agar. To those that just want to get to the recipe, I got chapters in the below, you can skip ahead, but I kind of want to go over why I got into agar and why you should too. Number one, cost benefit. Buying pre-made plates is expensive. And you know, let's face it, they're not always 100% clean. You get a lot of contamination in them, it's just wasted money. I did a little breakdown here and I averaged out the five top searches on Amazon, how much it costs per plate, and then I averaged out how much this would cost per plate. And I mean, look, you really can't argue with that. You know, you're talking pennies per plate versus dollars if you buy them pre-made. Uh, number two is quality control. Again, if you're buying plates, you've definitely gotten some that have gotten contaminated. I know I did when I was buying plates and it's frustrating. You know, you got to wait for return times, you know, waste of money. Maybe they'll give you your money back. Maybe they won't. Maybe you got to wait a week for more plates when you got work to do. Um, so quality control is another huge thing. I'd much rather know how to make it. That way, if they do contaminate, I can just go make more, right? Um, and versatility. You know, this is the biggest tool in our tool belt, right? <clears throat> we can germinate spores on here. We can expand our cultures on here. We can check our cultures to see if they're clean. We can clean our dirty cultures and we can store our genetics. That's why agar is so important to learn in mycology. Um, so without any further ado, we're gonna get into my three favorite recipes. Um, <clears throat> it's gonna be my spore recipe, water agar, and light malt extract. And you're not gonna believe it, we're gonna make agar out of potatoes today. Just basic white potatoes that you have in your house. It's actually one of my favorites, so let's get into it. All right guys, before we get into making these, let's go over what we're gonna to need today, right? Um, to make all three of these recipes, you only need four ingredients, right? Again, super, super simple. Again, keep this stuff as simple as you can and you'll have more success. I promise you that, okay? So, number one, we're going to need agar, right? Uh, I buy it by the pound on Amazon. It's pretty expensive. It's like 40 bucks, but I make a lot of plates and this will last me, you know, six months, almost a year. So, I make a lot of plates. 40 bucks goes a long, 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 long way. Um, you're going to need light malt extract or dark malt extract, any kind of brewer's malt, anything like that will work just fine. It doesn't have to be specifically light malt extract. Um, you can find this on Amazon. Uh, you can find it if you have like a homebrew store nearby. You can pick it up there. If you know somebody who works in a brewery, I bet he, can get, he or she can get their hands on it for you. Um, and you're going to need water. And then for my spore recipe, you're going to need just regular white potatoes. Uh, I know you're thinking, well, potatoes, really? Yeah, potatoes are a great nutrient source for agar. Um, and we'll get into all of that. Uh, optional things are food coloring. 
make sure it's gel food coloring the regular food coloring will not work when you pressure cook it it'll do all kinds of weird stuff i use it for two reasons number one is to differentiate uh, my different recipes so like this is my light malt agar this is my spore recipe this is my water agar right so i can easily distinguish which ones are which when i'm working uh, number two is contrast it's a lot easier to see when you have germination when you have um, contamination or anything else on your plate so it gives you a, a little more contrast as to what's on the plate too so it helps but again remember gel food coloring links for all this stuff are down in the description for you guys um, another optional thing is a stir plate when I make agar I'll typically make a bunch at one time even if I don't plan on pouring it all because agar is thermotropic which means it's a solid when it's cool it's a liquid when it's warm so you can literally after you're done sterilizing it and pressure cooking it you can just stick this in the fridge and it's good for a long long time whenever you're ready to use it you just throw it in some boiling water melt it back down i like to throw the stir bars in here that way once it's melted down i can stir it up and mix it up again again totally optional but you know if i'm gonna fire up my pressure cooker I'm not going to do it for one jar. I'll make a bunch, even if I only pour one jar. Oh yeah, and you'll need a little scale and some containers just to weigh out your nutrients in. Um, and a pot, because everything mixes up a little better with heat, um, especially the agar. Uh, you're definitely going to want that to be almost just about boiling when you mix the agar and it'll get really stiff and chunky on you. Um, quart mason jar um, or laboratory glass, whichever you prefer. Uh, I use a quart because it gives you enough headroom. I'll only put 500 milliliters of liquid in here because if when you're pressure cooking this, it will boil over if you put too much in there. So I use a one quart jar, but I only fill it up halfway. Um, as far as lids go, you can use just your regular modified Myco lid. If you don't have one of those, you can still use a metal lid. Just turn it upside down and don't crank it all the way down. Just barely hand tight, you know. Uh, and that'll work just fine too. Um, other than that, I think that's it. So let's get into each of these recipes and I'll show you how to make it. Thanks guys. All right guys, so the first recipe we are gonna make is water agar. And water agar is just what it sounds like. It is water and it is agar. Uh, what's the point you ask? Mycelium will grow in almost the absence of any nutrients, right? Whereas bacterias, molds, things like that will not. Um, mycelium is really good and has evolved over millions and millions and millions of years at growing where there's no food. So water agar is our best bet in cleaning up nasties off of cultures. So the idea behind water agar is that the mycelium is going to get a head start growing out and you'll be able to take a clean slice of that mycelium and then transfer it to a nutritious plate hopefully leaving all the contaminants behind. Water agar is a very, very, very useful tool. So for this recipe, it's super, super simple. I'm gonna do 500 milliliters of water, right? And I like my water agar to be a little on the drier and stiffer side um, because bacteria needs moisture to move around. Um, so I, I want it to be really dry. I don't want there to be a lot of moisture on my plate. So I use a two and a half percent agar load on that. So at 500 milliliters, that's going to be 12 and a half grams of agar powder. So you want to get this up to boiling before you mix your agar in because you will get chunks. Um, you really want to mix this stuff good. It will definitely get pretty chunky on you if you're not careful. Uh, and that's another reason why I like the stir plate. So I'll just drop it in here. I'm going to weigh out 12 and a half grams. You can be a little over, but I wouldn't be a little under. Like I say, you know, you might like to make this stuff a little on the stiffer side for water agar. 13.8, that's a bit much. 12.6, that'll work. All right. So once this gets to boiling, I'm going to dump it in here and then I'm going to turn this thing on and then mix the agar in and that'll be that. That's super easy. That's recipe number one. Got the water to a boil. Now I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to pour it on in here. 
I'm going to start my magnetic stirrer and get that thing going good. And slowly just add my agar in. Let that mix for a while there. Really just want to let it mix for a good minute or two. Um, you can also use a, a small whisk, which is what I used to use before uh, I did this. Uh, magnetic stirrers are great though. Links in the in the description below if you want to pick one up. They're invaluable to have in my, mycology. Hopefully most of you already have one if you're at this point in your uh, mycology game. But yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. So I'm going to put the lid on that. <clears throat> and that's ready to be sterilized. We'll put that aside. Next up is light malt extract agar. Now this is just like a brewer's malt. Like I said, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at um, any brew, home brew store, stuff like that. Um, LME is my workhorse. This is what I do all my culture work on. Um, I've tried additives to this. I've tried adding peptone. I didn't like the growth it gave me. I've tried adding yeast. You know, I think the only thing it did was just put more shit in my plates. I don't like when my plates look like that. I like them clear. That's just my OCD. Um, less shit I have floating in my plate, the better. And I've just found like... This is just my go-to. This is what I do 90% of my culture work on. Unless I'm germinating spores or cleaning up cultures, this is what I'm using all the time. Same deal. 500 milliliters of water. We're going to use 15 grams of malt extract on this. And then 2% on the agar, so 10 grams of agar. And then I will use two drops of green food coloring. So what I'll do is I'll throw my stir bar and everything on the plate there. I'll even put my drops of food coloring in ahead of time. Two, two drops. Now when I'm mixing my light malt extract in my water, I like to use a whisk. I like to get it in there before it starts boiling. I find it dissolves a little bit better when it's just warm. You definitely will get some chunks of this stuff too, if you're not careful. So the light malt, I'll stir in there before it boils. It definitely, it definitely seems to dissolve a little bit better when you do it that way. It kind of clumps up if you do it while it's boiling and it's too hot. And then you'll have shit floating in your plates. It won't hurt it, but it just looks like crap. Our mixture is boiling now, so we are going to pop it on in here. Hopefully it don't make too much of a fucking mess. I impress myself on that one. Get this thing stirring around nicely, and then we're going to just add our agar powder in there. These I find a little harder to get the agar in properly sometimes. All right. The stir bar just makes really quick work of this. Um, it's such a pain in the ass trying to stir this by hand. It really is. I'll give that a good minute or so to stir. And there we have our light malt extract agar, All right? Boom, so that one's ready. Okay, and now, so this one, I gotta give a shout out to Willie Maiko for this recipe. Uh, <laughs> so, I made this a long time ago. I was like, there's no way this shit's gonna work. Potatoes, and sure enough, it worked great. I did some comparison testing with this recipe side by side with um, light malt extract for just some culture work. And the light malt extract grew faster, the mycelium grew faster. Um, but it turns out, for whatever reason, spores absolutely love this recipe. My spore germination rate on this recipe is well above 95%. Uh, I can't say the same about any recipe I've ever tried in mycology ever, and that's why I still use this. In true Willy fashion, what you wanna do is you want to take about 65 grams of 
just peeled white potatoes. About 600 milliliters of water because we're going to boil this for 10 minutes and some of this is going to boil off. And we're just going to put the potatoes in the water. And what you want to do is you want to bring this to a boil. Not a raging boil, just a slow rolling boil. And you're going to boil it for about 10 minutes. And then we are going to put it through a cheesecloth because you want to strain all the potato pieces out. This stuff's great. I'll link it down the bottom. Uh, it's reusable, it's washable. Two drops of blue food coloring. My stir bar in there. Boop. And then again, just a little mason jar funnel. Definitely need to have one of these. They're invaluable. And I'll double or quadruple up on the uh, cheesecloth here. It's two pieces just folded up. Now I'm gonna boil this for about eight minutes, just a low rolling boil to pull all of those starches and sugars out of the potato. And then I'm gonna strain it through there and we're gonna mix the same nutrient load with agar, or same, same agar load. And then that'll be that. So I'll catch you guys in a minute once this is done boiling. All right guys, so we've been boiling for about eight, 10 minutes now. We're just gonna strain this on through here. Ended up with about 400 milliliters of water, so gonna make my adjusted, so that's 10 grams of agar for this one. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that's stirred up really, really well, especially when you're doing higher percentages like two and a half, three percent agar. Again, that's just to stiffen it up, make it a little bit drier. Okay guys, so that's my three recipes. Now the only thing left to do is pressure cook it. Uh, we're gonna pressure cook this at 15 PSI for 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, that's all it needs. It doesn't need a whole lot to sterilize liquid. Make sure you got a little space in there. Hopefully this fits. If not, I might have to put it in my other pressure cooker. Ooh, just barely. All right, it only fits in there. So we're gonna fire this bad boy up <clears throat> and we're gonna pressure cook it. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to pour the plates. I'll show you guys how to combat the condensation. And, and that's really it, man. Like I said, just, just keep it simple. Agar is so important to learn. Um, you're you're going to definitely need a still air box um, if you want to work with agar. I just recently invested in a flow hood. I worked out of a still air box for years and years and years with, with great success. Um, but the still air the flow hood is definitely a game changer. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to pour, but you can do it in a still air box. So I guess that's it for this video. Stay tuned to the next one where I'll show you guys how to pour the plates. I'll show you some tips and trip, tricks on <clears throat> avoiding contamination. And again, go check out my Patreon. Link is down below. All the links for all the stuff that I went over with you today are also down below. Uh, I do get a little kickback from Amazon if you buy it through that. So that helps too. Um, happy to be back doing this stuff for you guys. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this stuff. And let's get to 5,000. Thanks, guys. Peace.